Hello, I'm Ken Burrell from Pragmatic PMO. If you're a project manager and you've ever thought to yourself at the end of a project, if I'd known then what I know now, I'd have done things differently, then you'll appreciate that everything seems easier and clearer with hindsight. But acquiring your own hindsight is hard and often painful. George Bernard Shaw said, if history repeats itself and the unexpected always happens, how incapable man must be of learning from experience. I think that project managers can learn a lot from each other's experience and especially from sharing their scars. Sharing experience gives you access to somebody else's hindsight without the hard work and the pain. So as part of my campaign for real project managers, on your behalf, I'm talking to some real project managers I've had the pleasure of working alongside so that you can benefit from their experience. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Jack Sayward, who's going to share some of his experiences with us. Jack, I'd like you to start, if you can, by introducing yourself and giving us a flavour of your background and how you got into project management. So I've been a project manager for about four and a half years. Uh, years. Um, I originally studied building surveying um, at university um, on a on a sandwich degree. So I spent a year out um, in London working for a um, a large landlord uh, based in the west end of London. After which it made sense that the uh, natural progression was to either become a building surveyor or go into the sort of the less uh, the less construction sort of techie side of the industry and go into project management. So what sort of projects are you involved with now? What's the size and shape of them? So currently I work for a global real estate firm um, based in the city or the west end of London. I work in the building consultancy department of that company which specifically focuses on their commercial fit outs. So the size of projects that I will typically work on can range from uh, 20,000 square feet up to 200,000 square feet and the type of projects that I work on can range from a standard commercial office fit out um, to a laboratory workshop um, sort of mixed use type environment. So quite a range then? Yes. Yeah. Looking back over your project management career can you give us an example of a scar so something that went wrong on a project that you were managing and what you learned from it? I was working on a commercial fit out um, of a a pre-existing industrial unit. So there was a third party specialist contractor appointed directly by the client and it was the contractor's responsibility to make sure that all of the infrastructure was in place by a certain date to allow this subcontractor to come over from Germany and install their single laboratories, okay. their single prefabricated laboratories within the allotted time frame within the, within the main programme. Initially, we received a, the, a list of requirements from the head of facilities within the client's organisation, um, and we used those requirements as gospel mm -hmm. um, in order to design and create the infrastructure um, for the for the subcontractor to come and install their laboratories. Um, it transpired, though, that when we actually met the third-party contractor they required a number of items that weren't specified in the documentation that we'd received right. thus far. Um, namely, they needed a 100% dust-free environment okay. um, and they needed the concrete slab uh, underneath the, 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 the laboratories to be within a tolerance that hadn't been allowed for within the design. So we found ourselves in a position where we were on a construction site so it was almost impossible to achieve a 100% dust free environment and we had a, uh, a slab that was not within the tolerances that they had now they had now specified right so we were faced with a little bit of a tricky situation in that we had material we had the materials um, outside right. the labor the labor hadn't uh, hadn't arrived yet okay so um, there was a bit of a buffer in between where we were now and when they were yeah. actually due to due to start I think from memory it was about I think it was about two weeks that we had to uh, uh, to react to this situation okay but you're in a dusty construction site Correct, yeah. with a uh, bumpy slab yeah um, and the laboratory installers needed it dust free and really quite level and correct. the materials are outside on the lorry. Correct. Okay, yeah. so what did you do? So we were faced with a situation where we had to test the market for a, uh, a, a, 
quick drying, self leveling screed fairly right. quickly. Luckily, we, we managed to find something that would that we could lay, achieve the tolerance, and it would cure up to a um, it, it would cure just enough to allow the construction to begin, and then it would cure to 100% strength by mm -hmm. the time that the laboratories had finished right um, so we did achieve we did achieve what they needed in that sense but obviously that came at, uh, at a cost right. to the client in the works had to be undertaken out of hours yeah and we had to use a fairly expensive material um, that hadn't been budgeted for, for previously similarly with the, uh, the the dust-free environment, we had to resequence parts of the works uh, of the main laboratory construction to be done out of hours when there weren't other works going on within the site that could be deemed to be creating okay. creating dust. We still weren't able to guarantee that the environment was 100% um, dust-free, but we sort of met in the middle with the contractor and they agreed to underwrite that the, um, the warranties was wouldn't be affected and, it, and, and that it was good enough. Okay. So in, in a nutshell, we managed to overcome the problem. We found a solution to both problems and the laboratories were constructed within the construction schedule, which mm -hmm. was great. What did you learn from this experience? When there's a third party contractor involved particularly when it's a client's contractor um, and they're going to be working under the remit of the main contractor of the build and there's items of infrastructure uh, work that the main contractor needs to complete in order for the subcontractors install to be successful mm -hmm. in that scenario I think it's vitally important to connect all parties at the beginning of the project to run through not only the end user requirements of the subcontractors uh, design but also the uh, the infrastructure requirements that um, that they need from the main contractor and the main project in order for their build to be successful um, so for example um, during the story that I've just told you so the set of documentation was outdated up unbeknowing to the client mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't have had a set of outdated information if we had um, if we had met with the subcontractor early on in the project and held a number of workshops and meetings uh, to, to, to fully run through uh, their requirements so that everyone was on the same page okay so what would you recommend to other people that they should do in their projects in order to avoid ending up in a situation like the one you experienced? I would recommend that they challenge their client. Um, don't take everything that they say as gospel and where there are other parties in, involved, challenge their client to bring those, 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 those parties to the table. Make sure that the, uh, the client makes the right introductions uh, to the to said third parties, so that information is freely available first hand and isn't passed on through too many different layers. Jack, thanks for your time, your openness, and your insights. So today we've heard from Jack about something that went wrong on a project that he was managing and how he recovered from it. Mark Twain said, history doesn't repeat itself, but often it rhymes. To me, that means that although the future is never exactly like the past, it's often similar enough for the lessons of the past to be useful. So my challenge to you is what will you learn from this? What will you do differently in your projects as a result of Jack's experience? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this interview, let me know by leaving a comment or a like or both, or by sharing it with others on social media. If enough people think these interviews are worthwhile, I'll make more of them. And if you want to appear in one, let me know. For other videos on project management topics, take a look at my video channel. For articles on project management and PMO topics, visit my website pragmaticpmo.com or follow me on Twitter at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell, Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for listening.